Uh, we forward to a next speaker and last speaker for this webinar, uh, Professor Felix Wong from uh, Hong Kong. He will talk about how introduction of Hong Kong Haiku Center, and also he will uh, give uh, some surgery video for the Haiku. Okay, Prof. Felix Wong is a uh, conjoint, conjoint professor of the University of New, New South Wales, chairman of CIMIGO and foundation chairman of China, Australia, Asia Pacific Forum of Minimal Invasive Surgery. <laughs> professor Felix Wong is renowned uh, of, for his contribution to medical education in Asia Pacific countries. He made up to 10 overseas every year to Asia Pacific countries and over teaching in the areas of gynecology oncology, endoscopy, women health, and hospital administration. He also received awards from Endos Award in Medical Science and Technology China, Ho Chi Minh City Beach Award, the People Committee of Ho Chi Minh City, Medical Ambassador, Gynecology Endoscopy Group of Chinese Medical Association, Endoscopy Award, China's Government Evaluation Committee of Endoscopy, mm -hmm. and Guangdong Friendship Award, Administration for Foreign Export Affairs of Guangdong Province, China. Okay, the, uh, Professor Felix Wong, it's time it's yours to talk about Haifu in Hong Kong. Okay, everyone see the slide? Um, thank you, Chairman, for your introduction, and thank you for everyone to stay behind so late. And uh, so, uh, quick. And Hong Kong Haifu Center. I'm going to share my experience in how to set up my center in Hong Kong. First of all, when, where, and how it start, all this happened. And it was an unusual opportunity and chances that in 2017, I met up with the founder of this um, Haifu machine um, in China during one of the conferences in China. I visited his Chongqing Haifu Medical Technology Company Limited. And I was impressed with the development he had with the Haifu treatment as well as the way he provides teaching uh, in the center and as well as the treatment of his patient. I visited the center, I found that there's a well-established high technology company with great potential for our gynecologists. And this will be the present large uh, factory and center. Now, in order to provide the high for operation service <laughs> I have planned the design of the Haifu Center, learning the technology, establish the center, and promote the Haifu. And the centers I visited are many places in China. Also, I visited uh, South Korea, as well as Taiwan, and um, to see various other places how they set up the high food center. You can see different high food center room on the side. Now, I find that the issue identified is doctor and patient communication in this one is too far away. And if teaching may affect the patient privacy in the other one, this one is too dark. You may not be able to see each other. And this is too crowded. And this one, the space is too large, and as well as this one, just like an operating theater. So I identify some of the problem that I'm going to set up my center, what it will like. And our friends, of course, together, we all try to learn this technology, including a field you may know, Professor Janen. And so I have no confidence until I visit Korea and a TV in television interview. And I visit Korea, and I find that Korean had a lot of day surgery clinic with high food treatment. Because in Hong Kong, I probably want to set up a day surgery center, not in the hospital, 
but in a private sector. Now, that how I begin, and the location will be in one of the old building, prest uh, prestigious building for the medical. Uh, inside is an old building built in 1958, foundation stone, 1957. So it is in the um, center of Hong Kong Island. Now have to see the uh, select the high full machine. And finally, I choose the JC200 because that will be suitable for my small room I'm going to use. And the JC is a bigger machine, even though they can do cancer surgery, other surgery will be suitable for hospital. And but for a private clinic, that's what I choose JC. What are the problem or what were the problem? How I set up the machine? I need to consider the building, the site of the building, the space, the weight bearing of the floor of an old building, the water pressure, the ceiling height, and the lift. You will see my problem is that it's a very busy district where my uh, center is, crowded with people. I got only a room of 60 meters square. So I use half of it for the theater, the other half for other facility, for example, waiting room, uh, consultation room, the learning room, change room, recovery room, preparation bed, and the theater. And why? Because Hong Kong, the rental is very expensive. Even this small room will cost me 15,000 US per month. Besides, this, there's no bigger room for me. This 62 years old building, we worry about the full weight. So we need a steel plate to share the weight of this machine. The water pressure, you can see the water pressure is so high. We have some filter early on got broken because of the pressure. You can see we have to wash. And the machine, you see the floor, it's really just able to build the machine. So you can also, if your uh, floor height is really too low, you can use the new machine JC200D. Now, the lift, a small lift from an old building. We need to break the machine down into very small pieces and to carry it out and then we build it. Finally, we've got everything ready and for the decoration. There's now the pictures or video on my center. You can see it's not like any traditional operating theater. It's very uh, friendly. So all my patients love it. So I use this space for the theater. We need essential features, for example, medical consultation room for the patient, sign consent. I allow doctor to learn from here instead of crowded together in my theater. It need to be a change room, the recovery room, and also space for storage, oxygen, washing, cleaning, and medicine storage. All this need to be in your mind. Now, that is what the center look like, change room, reception room, and there's the consultation room, preparation corner, the learning observation room. I mean, doctor can stay here to see what we are going on. It's the one-way mirror so that you can see inside, the patient can see uh, there are people there. And also uh, this inside the theater. I learned one thing is the light seems to affect the mood of the patient. So I use some LED light from New Zealand. They can all a different color, just like color okay. So the patient will feel that they are in a theater, like in the traditional theater. You can see different color will make them more relaxed. Now you can see I all turn home to color. The patient went, went in to have the surgery. They may thought they are in a color okay. And for People who are watching from the observation room, they can see us operating as well as they can see all the actual pictures when we are doing it. We can have communication. The learner can learn and we have all the pictures. So, but we 
keep the patient privacy intact. Now, I also have a facility. You can see this is a 360 degree camera. So this camera allow us to be able to see the whole picture. But when I put a camera behind here, and uh, you can see not only the uh, operating, you can see them, but people when they are bored, they can look around to see the nurse, to see what's operating. Because I learned from laparoscopic surgery, we all look at the television monitor. We are quite boring. So a 360 degree camera will help us or help other people when they are watching, can see elsewhere. Now, another features I have is to be able to monitor the patient uh, temperature at the bottom. So when we are doing the abrasion, there's some, we are recording the temperature all the time, instantly. So I find that there's certain very interesting features. When you burn a fibroid and burn an adenomyosis, the temperature that radiate to the bottom are quite different. So in, the, in those days, my nurse is uh, recording and while the patient is having the treatment. Now, what I find that now I put it in front of me so that I can watch. And this is what a patient who have operation done for adenomyosis. I found that the heat spread in many directions. But for a fibroid, more on the right side, and you can see the, the temperature can rise higher and higher. I noticed that once it lasts for quite some time, the patient starting to complaining of leg pain or back pain. I need no, I need to move or stop. So very interesting uh, infrared monitoring, just like when we are checking our temperature, um, everyone. So of course, my center have the various things other than the lighting, the wall, and we have monitor, we have security, we have the alarm and communication system. So this is the center where we have all this facility, just like facility with the traditional theater. Then we start to get doctor to China to learn from Chongqing. And when thing is ready, and we started to check the machine, get everything start. Now, my center, how to promote it? I talk to various people and um, in lectures, our colleagues in ONG, and we see a television interview and visitor from overseas. We have uh, distinguished VIP and uh, expert from China visiting my center, as well as patient, the relative are joining them during the treatment. So I allow patient relative to join them, the mother, the husband, or even the friend, they sit next to them. So it's not only the patient admires of this uh, treatment, the relative is going out and speak to all these other people. The most important are the patient. Once they receive the treatment, they agree for us sometime to tell them the expression, uh, their, their impression, their experience, how the problem being solved. This is the number of patients we have treated. And when we first started, Hong Kong had some crisis. There's political crisis. However, despite the COVID-19, while the hospital are short of patients, our day surgery center, the number is increasing. However, lately, we might be too successful. The insurance company is starting to cause us some problem. You can see our number are dropping. But still, we maintain at around 20 a uh, one month. For one and a half years, we managed to treat 200 patients now. So that was in March 2001. We will soon have 300 patients in a month's time or two. So I thank all my doctor for the support are going to support this initiative and development. We went to Chongqing several times 
and research other centers in China. So I have to learn this technology. I foresee the change of gynae surgery from what we have done, the advanced laparoscopic surgery to robotic, to some extent, some surgery will be focused ultrasound surgery. My center have been uh, uh, written to tell people about this uh, surgery uh, theater design in a private clinic is published in the uh, Journal of Gynecology and Minimal Invasive uh, Therapy. So when the COVID-19 is under control, anyone welcome to come to visit us in, the, in Hong Kong to see uh, my center, you're welcome. You can also contact me with all this website and WhatsApp. I'm ready to answer some question about my center. Thanks for listening. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Felix Wongs, for your nice presentation. And we open for discussion, uh, five until 10 minutes. Uh, from audience, is there any question? Okay, uh, Dr. Uh, Prof. Felix, uh, may I have a question for you? Uh, are you still going? Are you still have uh, any uh, laparoscopy surgery after you're doing a uh, high food? After yes, uh, quite a bit. Now, what happened is all the patients and um, come to you want to have the fibro treatment, and uh, of course, those suitable for high food, we do high food. Those unsuitable or they have other problem, and they always think, oh, but the old ovarian tumor can also be treated with high food. So patients do come for all sorts of reasons. So our patient number did increase, many of my colleagues as well, so that we can uh, offer them uh, treatment laparoscopic, open surgery, vaginal, all the surgery in, in addition to our high food surgery. Okay. So not every fibroid or, uh, or, or, or adenomyosis is, will be a uh, pro uh, solved problem with the HIFU, isn't it? Yeah, because um, adenomyosis, I mean, China, they can treat adenomyosis and find it very useful. We found that very useful as well. And however, um, because we rely on the insurance company to pay out, so the insurance company, one of the things they're saying that is experimental. They do not consider the, um, the China data. So because many Western countries don't have this surgery done for high food surgery for adenomyosis. So we have to explain and try to help the patient. Um, it's getting difficult, but uh, we'll try. Now I see a few question is how many cases I'm going to do a day is that we do maximum three a day, usually two. Now, the reason is we have only a small space. We don't have time for the patient to rest. Usually after the treatment, they rest for two hours or three hours, and then they can go home. We don't have any hospital bed because we are not linked up with the hospital. So they go home after two hours. We have only one recovery bed, so that's the problem. But if the high food center is in the hospital, I think we can, like in China, we, if we got the patient, we can do around five, because some of the fibro, we can treat it with half an hour and or one hour, one and a half hour. It's not difficult at all. Okay. Uh, is there any? Uh, is there any from audience? Uh... Uh, question, raise hand. Maybe Dr. Colin Wu, any, any question? I have one question here, very interesting. Is that, do you have um, any medical issues such as medical radiation leak and any leak when you have high food in your private clinic? Now, high food stands for high intensity focused ultrasound. Ultrasound do not have radiation leak. Besides this, in fact, we treat more patients who have medical issue that prevent them or put them high risk for laparoscopic surgery or open surgery. For example, deep vein thrombosis. For example, a patient who have a cerebral uh, hemorrhage. 
just uh, years ago, and any surgery will be difficult or will have risk, especially some with deep vein thrombosis who are anticoagulant. In fact, we are treating patients with some medical problem which open surgery will not be able to do. Okay, now if there's no further question, uh, one question is the number of staff and the qualification. Um, my staff all, we went to Chongqing to learn from them and then we just by practice and under uh, Chongqing guidance uh, by remote control and or there's doctor can come to uh, supervise us and to see how we are doing. So many of our doctors get benefit from Chongqing sending staff to us to help us to develop the center. The qualification will be in due course, uh, a page and individual country, we are going to try to set up the training uh, for everyone. So hopefully we'll be able to help. Chris, very nice job. Do quite a good job here. And uh, in a very short term, you get the 200 cases already. It's not so easy. And did you have uh, any uh, medical legal issue in the uh, that is uh, in the early stage? But it's quite easy to have uh, some uh, complications or something. Did you in the early two hundred cases? Did you have uh, any problem in the complication with the patient or something? Uh, very good question. And early on, despite. Um, I select the patient, I make sure all the patients are able to have the high food without much complication problem. Um, I myself did have a patient who have um, some mucosal fiber, not a big one, but seven centimeter. After high food treatment, she had continuous bleeding and could be due to infection or what. But when he, she went to see another doctor. She was convinced to have a hysterectomy done right away. So that's the problem, that if the patient, when we first started, are not so convinced about the treatment, and whenever there's problem, they go to another doctors, and other doctor won't know what's going on. That could be one of the issue. Now, in fact, we are now treating patient, even the fiber is up to 12, 14 centimeter. So in fact, it's not difficult at all. The larger the fiber, maybe the easier. We need to know what type of fiber it is. So in fact, uh, we are lucky. This, besides this, for medical legal problem, I know many of the uh, medical legal people, especially the lawyer world. So they're helping us to set up our criteria. <laughs>